Friday here, so we're into June now, and it's one of Singapore's insanely hot weather, which is the perfect thing because we're gonna test out if the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro can handle Singapore's intense hot heat. What is the weather right now? It's currently cloudy and 31 degrees. And we're doing this because there have been reports that some of Apple products actually melted under Singapore's hot heat. So we're putting this to the test. I'm really excited to test this out because the second inch has been a beast. No matter how many crazy tasks I've thrown on this, it's so quiet, it doesn't heat up. The more management is good, so I can't wait to see if this can stand the heat right now because I'm melting. Okay, let's go! After all the tests, and we get to see if we can easily use the MacBook Pro under the hot sun during summer. And this is important if you live in a hot country like I do, or if you're someone who works outside on the go a lot. So I ran four tests under two conditions, outside at 33 degrees and indoors at about 27 degrees. And the main goal is to see if you can actually use the Mac under real life hot environments. The first test, I wanted to find out if the battery life drains faster outside versus indoors. So basically, I turned on Final Cut, edited on it with 10 Chrome tabs open at the background, and then I checked the battery life at the end of 30 minutes. And this was what I found. The battery life actually drains faster under the hot sun. And it makes sense if you think about it. But what's interesting is, at the start of the test, when we're outside, the fans on the Mac already started running at about 3,500 RPMs, and that's because the sun was heating up the Mac, the surface of the Mac was hot to touch, and even my butt was burning. So yeah, the fans got triggered really early to cool down the Mac and that was really helpful because the internal temperature of the Mac never went beyond 63 degrees Celsius. Whereas indoors here, the fans never ever got triggered and the internal temperature was 60 degrees maximum. And that means the thermal management of the Mac is pretty good even under hot environments. That being said, what is the actual performance like outside versus indoors? So I found that we had way worse performance outdoors under the hot sun versus indoors in a cool environment. I exported a 27 minute final cut project and the export times are so different. We got 2 minute 58 seconds when we're outside versus 1 minute 51 seconds when we're indoors. And that's like almost 2 times slower than indoors. To investigate further into CPU performance, I also ran the Cinebench stress test to compare multi-core scores and check for thermal throttling. The results were really shocking. We scored much higher indoors versus outdoors, about 12,000 points versus 8,000 points. I couldn't believe it at first, so I ran a second test while I was outdoor, and it dropped down to 7,691 points. So it's like confirmed. CPU performs better indoors in a cool environment than outdoors in a very, very hot environment. The interesting thing is, okay, when we were outdoors, the fan speeds were very consistent at 3,500 RPM. Internals were kept super cool at about 71 degrees and CPU activity seemed to be doing well. There were no dips in performance. However, when we were indoors, the fan speeds were lower and the CPU actually hit 103 degrees Celsius there was no dip in performance whatsoever. I was half expecting CPU to perform well when it was outdoors just because of how well the CPU temperature was maintaining at. But based on these results now, my theory is that because it was so hot outdoors, the Mac wasn't pushing the CPU to its maximum just so that internals don't get so hot. Because I mean, if it did, imagine if the internals were hot plus the external heat is so hot as well, the machine just might go kaboom or like overheat. So rather than that happening, the Mac decided not to push the CPU to the maximum potential just to avoid overheating. But let me know what you think of this theory or comment below if you have another theory on this. The final test was to compare GPU performance using the 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme Stress Test. And yes, the GPU performed way better indoors. We were getting about 120 frames per second versus 60 frames per second outdoors. Now, when the test was running outdoor, the highest temperature was about 75 degrees, whereas indoors, the fans were slightly noisier, I could actually hear it, and the temperature hit 90 degrees. So it's a very similar pattern to the CPU stress test. 
Generally, what I noticed was when we were outside, the Mac was hard to touch, scalding even. But as soon as I started using the Mac, the fans started running to keep the internals cool. Internals were always between 60 to 80 degrees. But when we were indoors with the AC on, environment is much cooler, so the fans never ramp up at all, except during the GPU test. However, with that, the CPU and GPU cores hit about 90 to 100 degrees. So, what I learned, it's not necessarily a bad thing that the internals of the Mac heat up. It just means that the Mac is drawing more power, using the CPU, GPU cores, processes to get things done faster, better. But what's super interesting is, Apple's website actually claims that the optimal temperature for MacBook Pros is between 10 to 35 degrees Celsius. But when I was doing the outdoor test, the weather was only 33 degrees Celsius. So why didn't the Mac perform well? My theory is because I put the Mac on concrete ground and concrete tends to absorb energy and heat. I'm guessing after a whole day of absorbing energy, the ground is way hotter than 35 degrees. And that's why my butt was boiling. And that's why the Mac was hot to touch. The concrete ground was essentially boiling my Mac and my butt. And that's why the Mac didn't perform well. So yep, lesson learned, don't put your Mac on hot surfaces. If you need to work outdoors, put it on your lap or in your bag where it's cooler. Heat really affects performance, no surprises there. But at least now you know, the Mac really can't stand the raw heat in Singapore. I hope you found this helpful. Everything mentioned will be linked below. And if you enjoyed this, do me a huge favor and like and subscribe. It really does help the channel. So thank you very much. Take care, stay minty and cherry. Goodbye.